Greetings everyone! In today's video we will be covering one of the strongest modifiers in Aether Gazer, Roaring Thunder Thor. Thor is a lightning DPS unit, she belongs to the Yggdrasil faction of characters, and uses Trace as the resource to execute her skills. Before we go over her skills, let's first take a look at her Thunder Potential passive. Every successful hit from Thor's basic attacks or skills will accumulate a set amount of Thunder Potential. Up to a maximum of 100 stacks can be accumulated, and Thor will consume 7 stacks every 0.5 seconds. Thor will enter a violent thunder state for two seconds every time she casts an enhanced skill. For every one thunder potential she possesses, the duration of violent thunder is increased by 0.01%. For every one thunder potential Thor possesses, an instance of her attack is increased by 0.3%. This damage buff can reach its maximum capacity at 80 stacks of thunder potential. While in the violent thunder state, thunder potential will no longer be consumed and lightning damage is increased by 15%. In addition, Thor will also gain invincibility during its duration. Thor will obtain 9 stacks for every basic attack landed, 15 stacks for every skill landed, and an additional 15 for every successful skill hit while in her violent thunder state. Her basic attack has 5 sequences, and will grant her one trace every time the fifth sequence successfully hits a target. Her dodge skill Lightning Escape will trigger a three second time fracture, grant super armor for two seconds, and 15 thunder potential. Using her basic attack after a successful dodge will start her attack at the fourth sequence. Skill one, Quivers Underground, advances forward with Mjolnir to deliver a sweeping blow to the surrounding foes. Thor will gain one trace for every successful hits with skill 1. While in possession of three traces, successful hits with skill 1 will temporarily change it to its enhanced form, Hammer's Trike. Performing two basic attacks after casting a Hammer Strike will unleash the fourth and fifth sequence of the basic attacks and grant one trace on hit. Skill 2 rumbles far away, advances forward with Mjolnir delivering a sweeping right hook to the surrounding foes. Thor will gain one trace on successful hit with skill, too. If Thor is in possession of three traces after rumble, far away hits a target, it is changed into rumble strike. Performing two basic attacks after casting rumble strike will unleash the fourth and fifth sequence of the basic attacks and grant one trace on hit. Skill 3 trembles deep within, slams Mjolnir down in front of her, and deals AoE lightning damage to the surrounding foes. Thor will gain one trace on successful hits with skill. 3. If Thor is in possession of three traces after trembles deep within, hits a target, it is changed into tremble strike. Performing two basic attacks after casting a tremble strike will unleash the fourth and fifth sequence of the basic attacks and grant one trace on hit. Her ultimate, Fury at Twilight, depletes all thunder potential to enter the Raging Thunder state and summon a gauntlet to strike the enemy. While in the Raging Thunder state, Thor gains invincibility and gains the maximum bonus damage provided by thunder potential. Every strike sends lightning rushing towards the enemies in front of her. Once thunder potential is full, she'll deliver a final blow and exits the Raging Thunder state. All trace modifiers will have their skill damage increase by 30% for 12 seconds. If Comet Ray Zenkibo is on the team, increase light damage by 30% and increase the skill damage of all teammates by 30% for 12 seconds. When Living Soul Osiris is on the team, their ultimate skill chain rumbles from the underworld will increase trace modifiers skill damage by 35%. In addition, team's damage dealt is further increased by 20%, plus 0.2 times Osiris's ultimate skill level. This buff will remain active until Osiris leaves her judge of the underworld state. Now that you have an idea of what her skills do, here is the game plan. While in combat, our goal should be getting her thunder potential to that 80% to activate her buffs, 
We can achieve this by alternating between her basic attacks and skills. The rotation is slightly different for each ether code, so let's start with yellow code. Use skill 1, followed by skill 3 base, then skill 3 enhanced, follow that with two basic attacks to trigger the fourth and fifth sequence of her attack and gain a trace. Basic attack for about two seconds while skill 1 is on cooldown. Then use skill 1, followed by skill 2 base, then enhanced, followed by two basic attack to trigger the fourth and fifth sequence for the trace. Basic attack for about two seconds while skill 1 is on cooldown and just repeat. Needless to say, the enemy isn't going to just stand there and let you change its relationship status to punching bag. So be precise with your dodge skills and follow them up with two basics to continue gaining thunder potential. For red code, we use pretty much the same combo, but replace skill 1's role with skill 2's. On screen now is the sequence for that combo. That line is used with her functor, and since I don't have it, it would be difficult to showcase. Yellow code requires no real setup, so go ape on anything that moves. When it comes to functors, Elf, Galadriel from the DV shop, is a serviceable option. The only real downside is that its effect is a single target debuff, but shouldn't be a problem in single target boss encounters. Elf, Thiam's effect is greater than that of Galadriel. However, I would still recommend Galadriel overdue to its low base stats. Elf, Murphil is a fantastic option, providing a 40% increase to skill damage at max stacks and synergizes very well with Thor's playstyle, especially if she is running her yellow ether codes. Her signature functor, Selbrian, will allow her to summon additional lightning strikes after every skill cast while in the violent thunder state. Increase her damage by 10%. When a non-enhanced skill or blows from her ultimate, other than the final strike is used. This can stack up to three times, with every new stack refreshing its seven seconds duration. When the final punch of fury at twilight or skill three is cast, increase its attack by 12% for every stack she possesses. And if she has the maximum of three stacks, it is counted as having four stacks. When skill three's enhanced form is used, all current stacks are reset. Overall, her functor will provide her with a great deal of damage, and the interaction with her skill 3 can be viewed similar to how Tsukuyomi's functor functions. However, Thor's functor is much more consistent and requires no real setup to make full use of. For sigils, the new Immortal Chariot is going to be your best option for slots 1, 3 and 5. The set increases lightning damage by 5%, and increases skill damage by up to 40% based on how much combat resources are consumed. This set also becomes best in slot for Tsukuyomi, equipped with her functor. For slots 2, 4 and 6, Raging Waves Decree will provide an extra trace on skill hit, allowing for easier enhanced skill cast, in addition to bonus attack and crit damage. For enchantments, the standard attack, skill damage, Elemental bonus damage, crit rate and crit damage are all good to have. Warps really allow you to personalize characters in a way that best fits your playstyle, as such the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. With that said, here are my recommendations. For players who are running Thor without Osiris, use two Executioners and two Power Up Melee for slots 1 and 2. For slots 3 and 4, use two Telephathai's Force Field 1s. If your health is usually above 70% during combat, pair them up with two EM Flux. If life support sounds like another Monday to you, then run two Savages instead. Savage has the highest damage buff at 72% bonus damage, so if you can maintain the low HP requirement and live, it's definitely worth the risk. For slots 5 and 6, we can go with two Evolution Particle 3s and two Kinetic Mods. The Kinetic mods will offer a 45% damage buff in modifier mode, but if you want something more universal, you can swap them out for two Telekinesis Vector 3s. Her skill 3 has the highest damage multiplier, so boosting its level will result in more damage when it is used. For those of you who are going to be running her with Osiris, the goal is to turn them into complete alt bots. 
With this setup, you should be able to cast your skill chain within the first two seconds of any battle. For slots one and two, we will continue to use two power-up melee and two executioners. For slots three and four, use two savage. Again though, only if you're okay with living life on the edge. Use two EM flux if you are untouchable in battle, or telepathize force field ones if you want something that will just be active passively. And you want to pair whichever one you choose with two unfetters. Make sure you put two unfetters on Osiris as well, for this to work flawlessly. For slots five and six, we are run two kinetic mods or two evolution particles. Three. Since we are running Osiris, we can have Yellow Code Osiris apply weaken to the enemies, so we could run two Armor Breakers, allowing all of our attacks to deal 15% more damage. For Ether Codes, 3 Red is recommended if you have her Signature Functor. This will reduce her damage taken by a ridiculous 200% while in Violent Thunder State. Decrease the lightning resistance of all surrounding foes by 15% when entering the Violent Thunder state. Increased Violent Thunder's duration and crit damage by 30% while in the state. If you're running the free-to-play Gen Zone Functor, 3 Blue is going to be a solid choice for you and generally the one we will recommend for non-Sig Thor. This will increase the damage of your non-enhanced skills by 10%. When a skill changes to its enhanced form, and not used its cooldown will be reduced. And lastly, the fourth sequence of her basic attack can now be triggered after any skill and landing, the hit will increase her attack by 10%. Like I mentioned earlier, Yellow Code synergizes very well with Elf, Murphil. This code just goes all in on Ungabunga. It will increase her basic attack damage by 100%. When the fourth and fifth sequence of her basic attack lands, she will enter the Violent Thunder state and trigger additional lightning strikes. Skill 3's cooldown will be reduced, and the additional attacks are considered as skill damage. This line is the easiest to play, but its damage is lower than the red and yellow. Alright with Thor about wrapped up, let's quickly go over the updated Osiris builds. We will be making some small changes to her vanilla setup. If you're running Ukakaf or another non-signature functor, you can change the three trace sets from launch into three ambush of the owls with yellow codes. If you are running her signature functor, then add three decree of the waves instead with red code. Keep her on yellow for support. If you want to run the armor, break strat. If you are watching this after her buff and have double S Osiris, with level three modules unlocked and her signature functor, Use three Cup Bearer of the Gods instead. On screen now is the warp configuration for her, the most important ones being the two unfetters for support, Osiris. Needless to say, Osiris is going to be the best character to pair with Thor. You can add Phantasmal Dawn Hera for a truly premium team comp. Another premium team comp is to replace Hera with Lu Liang. This will mainly buff Osiris. So if you're going to main Osiris, it's one to consider. The gathering she provides after her ultimate will prove useful for the entire team. Of course, if you don't have Osiris, Comet Ray Zenkabu on a yellow code should not be slept on. You could throw in Tyra Blaze for the Gen Zone bonus, and you'll have a pretty effective light team. Archaic Oath Vatandi can be used for the Gen Zone bonus and team-wide shielding with blue codes. And Heimdall can provide the Gen Zone bonus, as well as an attack and crit rate boost to the team. In closing, Thor being a lightning modifier had big shoes to fill. I'm happy to say, she did not disappoint. From my personal playtime with Thor and our other lightning DPS Tsukuyomi, I found Thor to be the more reliable one of the two. Of course, an argument can be made on whether or not one needs Thor if they already have Tsukuyomi. I'll just answer that for you now. Only if you have Osiris. In a vacuum alone, I don't think a 10 to 15% difference in power is really worth the stars, especially this close to 2.0. However, if you consider Roaring Thunder Thor with Living Soul Osiris in mind, I think I can safely say she's absolutely worth it. <laughs>